all there. Be all there. In your relationship or relationships in general, be all there. I cannot overestimate the importance and the impact of this one thing here, being all there. Maybe I feel it so much because I've had to work on that one so much. Oh, you know, I, I, you know, we're all into multitasking. You can't go through life without multitasking. You're doing two or three things at once. To get it all done, you, you really have to. I mean, some people multitask in many different ways. Uh, uh, they'll text while they drive. I won't uh, ask for a raise, showing the hands on that one. You might get in trouble. Um, you know, putting on makeup when you drive. I've never had that problem, thank God. Uh, you know, you've seen people who just, they're oblivious to things, or they're walking down the sidewalk and they're in their phone and they, they don't know, you know, bumping into people. I mean, people multitask. And, you know, it's good because at, at some points it's good because, you know, uh, it's helpful, it's beneficial. When you're working out, to put the earbuds in. You can listen to a podcast. You can listen to worship music. You can watch the news and get caught up with the news. I mean, that's very productive. Uh, so sometimes multitasking is good, but the problem is multitasking does not work in relationships. It doesn't. It takes away from the focus that is needed. In, now, some of you, I are, I are, well, I think I can do it. I think I can do it. Well, I'm telling you, you're wrong. You can't. God didn't create us that way. He didn't wire us that way. Um, and we, we, we think we can, but, but we can't. Now, this habit of being all there, uh, I mean... In, in our home situation, our family life, I mean, I, there's been many, 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 many times that I've been there physically, but I have not been there emotionally. <laughs> I've been there in body, but I'm w w way far away in spirit. I think you can relate to me. We've all, you know, kind of zoned out at certain times. I've been notorious in our family for um, asking a question to something that's already been answered maybe seconds ago. <laughs> Because I haven't been engaged in the conversation. I've been thinking about a, a game, a score. I've been thinking about something at work, something that's stressing me out. Just not involved in the conversation. And I'll oftentimes ask a question that it's already been answered. And they'll be like, oh, that's just dad. And so that's a real bad habit. I've really been working hard at learning to be all there. And to be able to put some things aside. And to be able to focus uh, in, in the relationship. So something that I'm trying to turn from a bad habit into a good habit is wherever you are, be all there. Wherever you are, whoever you are with, make this a habit, a decision that you are going to choose to be all there. Maybe you've seen, you know, kids that'll take their parents by the head and they'll Turn there and say, Dad, look at me. Mom, look at me. You know, we're so busy and, and oftentimes it's busyness around the kids that we forget to stop and parent or we forget to stop and, and be all there. And they have to turn our head. Would you please listen to me? And that's why this is good for any relationship. If you would do this one thing, I mean, there may be five things you need to do, but you do this one thing, you will see an immediate impact in your relationship, you will surprise some people. They'll be like, who are you? You know, where'd you come from? Wow, you're just, because people don't care how much you know. You may have a lot to say, but they don't care how much you know, and you've heard this before, until they know how much you care. And one way to really care is to simply be all there. Now, the Bible has a great story, Luke chapter 10, uh, that, that illustrates this so wonderfully and Jesus is such a master teacher and and he hits it right on the head in this whole area Matthew uh, Luke chapter 10 verse 38 Jesus and his disciples they continue on their way to Jerusalem and they came to a certain village where a woman named Martha welcomed him into her home now this probably wasn't the first time that Jesus came to their home they were family friends Mary uh, Martha and Mary who's another character and Lazarus was their brother remember that story uh, Lazarus is sick and they send word to try to get Jesus to come to heal their friend uh, and Jesus doesn't show up he delays he delays until Lazarus dies and they're like when Jesus finally shows up they're like 
Master, if you had been here, you know, he, he wouldn't have died. And, but Jesus knew ahead of time he was going to raise the brother up from the dead anyways. So it wasn't an issue to Jesus. But here, you know, so the, I'm just saying they knew each other. This wasn't the first time maybe that Jesus was at her, uh, their home. But, you know, she still welcomes him. And uh, can you imagine if Jesus came to your home? What kind of preparations you would make? Uh, you'd sure, you'd make sure it's picked up. You would probably have a good meal that you're thinking or you're preparing for, getting all ready, because man, you know, the VIP is coming and, and let's, let's make sure he has a good experience. Well, that was the case for Martha. So uh, her sister Mary, another character in this story, she's sitting at the Lord's feet listening to what he taught. Now this irritated Martha, because Martha, she is a doer. And she could not stand that her sister Mary was just sitting there doing nothing. And so she points that out. It, it says Martha was distracted by the big dinner she was repairing, preparing. So she came to Jesus and said, Lord, doesn't seem unfair to you? And part of me wants to defend Martha. Doesn't it you? I mean, think about it. A VIP Jesus is coming to your house, of course you're going to make things right. You're going to busy yourself. I mean, come on, kids. They're, they're 15 minutes and counting. You just put it under the bed. I don't care. Put it in the closet. we got to get this place right. And, and so part of me wants to defend Martha. You know, she's just, she wants to please the master. And uh, so, you know, doesn't it seem unfair to you that my sister just sits there while I do all the work? Tell her, Jesus. Come on now, Jesus. Tell her to come and help me. Well, Jesus responds to Martha and says, but listen, my dear Martha, 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 you are so worried and upset over all these details. <laughs> Can you relate to that? Have you ever been so obsessed over the details that you miss out on maybe some of the important things? There's times I'll say to Connie after we have guests and there's a, you know, the dish. It's, it's full of dishes and a mess. And she'll, be, she'll go right away and start cleaning up because she wants to get all that done. But honey, come on, leave that till later. I'll help you, maybe. <laughs> I'll, I'll help you later. <laughs> she knows better, right? <laughs> I'll help you. Just come, come, come in here. We're talking about some good stuff. You're going to miss it. And, and you know, because some people, that's, they're like Martha. They're, they're doers, doers, doers. They got to get it done before they can ah, relax. And there's a place and a purpose for that. But you know, Jesus points it out. You're so worried and upset over the details. You know, how easy is that to do, uh, to, to, to be that, to, to get upset and get worried? And, and we just want to control certain situations. How about the holidays? You've got, maybe you've got multiple families coming. It's kind of a complex family story, but you got, you know, well, the one family's coming here and, and they got to fit into this time slot and it's Christmas day, right? So you got a lot to do this time slot. And then, then we'll have this family come over here and we can't have them overlap because you know what happened last time it overlapped. It just wasn't a good scene. Or, you know, you're going to sit here around the table. You're going to sit here. Make sure we don't talk about that specific issue because we bring that up. You know what happened last time. So we're trying to control all the details and control outcomes. You know what a train wreck that can be because it never ends up the way you would think it should go. And so it's so easy to find ourselves being so worried and so upset and uptight over some of the details. And Jesus, he's so good. He's so smart. He's so wise. He said the most important thing is this. There is only one thing worth being concerned about, Martha, and Mary has discovered it. And don't you dare make her feel guilty over it. And it will not be taken away from her. Don't guilt her to get up and try to help you. She has discovered the most important thing. You're busy with all this stuff, but there's something that is more important. And that's Mary has found it. Mary is enjoying time with Jesus while Mary, Martha is just finding herself busy and busy and busy and busy. Now, I want to ask some probing questions this morning related to this story. The first one is this. Do you relate more to Mary or to Martha? Are you kind of the one who, you know, you're just more relaxed? Or are you the one that, man, you got you to gotta have everything done, details and in control. So who do you relate to? Now, it's good for you to maybe self-assess, but I'm going to tell you, you're probably not as accurate about yourself as those around you. So a better question is, 
What would others say? What would your spouse say? What would your husband say? What would your teenager say? Mom, I just can't get any time with you. You're so busy, and I know a lot of the stuff is busy around us because you're taking us here and taking us there, but I don't know when the last time we've had a face-to-face. I I feel like, Mom, even though I'm a teenager, I need to take your head and turn it this way. Mom, would you look at me? So what would somebody else say? You know, who 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 are you more like? And now here's a spot where you want to get defensive, especially if they say, well, you know, I feel this. This is my perception. This is where you're going to want to be defensive, and put up your wall and say, well, this is why I'm doing, you know, blah, blah, blah. Let me give you the best answer, the best response you could ever have in that situation. And that's this. The only thing you should say is thank you for caring enough to share. And I promise to weigh it carefully. That is a piece of gold. If it's the only thing you get out of this uh, meet, uh, teaching here today, is that phrase right there. Because I know you want to defend, I know you want to come up with your excuses and your rationale, but oftentimes that will shut the conversation down in a hurry. Best thing to say is thank you for caring enough to share. (laughs) And I'm, you know, I promise to weigh it carefully. So let me ask you another question then. How would you have responded to Jesus when Jesus, you know, called Martha out on that issue of being too busy, you know, how would you have responded to Jesus in that situation? Would you have said, seriously, Jesus? Really? You mean sitting down, doing nothing is better than doing what's needed and what's required? Jesus, are you serious? Really? Would you respond that way or would you uh, be offended? Go tuck your tail between your legs and run and hide and feel underappreciated. Nobody, nobody, you know, everybody takes me for granted. I got to do all the work around here, like Martha said. And, and so you're just going to, everybody's going to have to walk around eggshell, on eggshells around you now for the rest of the day. Hey, where'd dad go? Oh, he's, he's out in the garage. Let him give him time to cool off. He took a walk, whatever. You know, how would you respond to that? Or, or would you be like, oh, finally, I'm relieved. Somebody finally is giving me permission to stop. And to sit down and relax and stop controlling every situation. Some good questions. I guarantee if you look at this, here's a good idea for a devotion time, a devos with your family. Right here. This read this story that we just read, and I'm giving you all the points here now. So you're like, you could be like, wow, Dad, you're so smart. You're such a Bible scholar, right? No. So read that story and then ask these questions as a family. I'm telling you, you will hear some things that will might be, ouch, but it could be some real growth points in your relationship because sometimes we just see through our own tunnel vision. We've got blind spots. We don't see what others see. And they may be seeing something totally different that would be so helpful so that you don't repeat what you've already been doing. That's a definition of insanity. Keep doing the same thing over and over, expecting different results. Here's some opportunity for you to grow in your relationship. It's not easy. These these things are simple, but they're not easy. Okay? But I'm telling you, what's going to happen? You do that. You do that tonight for a family meeting or maybe sometime this week where you have a family dinner and you're going to have a family meeting. If that's ever possible these days, I hope you're beginning to train your children small when you can when you can really have that leverage and do that. I guarantee you they'll come to you later and say, "Hey, can can uh, can, can we do that thing again?" Well, what thing? That thing of where we sit around and talk? Yeah. They will be asking you to do that because of just the opportunity to, to grow and take that relationship further than it's ever been before. So here's some other questions that kind of uh, probe even further. And this is an opportunity for you, mom and dad, to talk a little bit about your past. Did you grow up in a home with parents who are all there? Did you grow up in a home with parents who were all there. Okay, you might have to talk a little bit about your experience of growing up. And let me say this, your past is not an excuse as to why you are the way you are, but it does offer an explanation. It's not an excuse. Well, that's just the way I am. Take it or leave it. You married me for better or worse. I guess this is worse, you know, too bad. No, it's not an excuse, but it does offer an explanation as to why you handle relationships the way you do, the why you function the way you do, 
okay? But did you grow up in a home with parents who were all there? And if not, which maybe many of you would say, yeah, that's, that's true, what do you think kept them from being all there? What was it? Probably some good things, maybe work. I mean, that's a good thing, but maybe sometimes that balance scale tips maybe too much. Maybe it was an addiction, maybe it was alcohol, maybe it was the bottle that got in the way of your dad from being all there in that relationship. Maybe your mom was so emotionally overwhelmed that she was not emotionally present to help you and guide you through that time. Maybe, maybe her past was riddled with things that, that she, she couldn't give what she didn't have or he couldn't give what he didn't have. These are questions that really help you get some good things talking that are, that are healthy for your family. Maybe it was conflict management. Maybe your mom and dad, they didn't know how to handle conflict. They're just doing what the previous generation did. They didn't know how to sit down and work things through. I always kind of ended up working things out, but you know, it wasn't very pleasant. You just survived, maybe. You, know, you, you wonder why you have such an anger issue, and that's maybe the thing that, well, you saw that's the way that dad handled it. That's the way that mom handled it. Maybe uh, when something happens, you find yourself escaping. It may be because you saw that happen. I, I don't know. But some good questions for you to understand uh, why we do things the way we do things. And then let's make it personal again. Don't think about your parents anymore. Go back for, to yourself. Say, what are, what are two things that keep you from being all there? What are two things? Maybe, hey, you know what? Let's change that to one thing. Can you identify one thing? Just one thing is all I'm asking this morning. Can you identify one thing that is keeping you from being all there in your relationships? And again, your self-assessment might be is accurate. Why don't you ask those around you? What would you say? What, what, what do you see that maybe I don't see? And then ask this question. What effect do you think it's having on our family? What effect do you think that's having on our relationships? Good question. And all of these are, these are great questions for a staff or a leadership team. What is one thing that is in the way of us being connected as a team? If you've got courage as a manager of people to lead people through some of these questions, if you've got the courage or if you just want to keep, you know, walking around the white elephant in the room and, and not really deal with some things that are keeping you from connecting, man, these are some great questions. So what effect do you think it's having? Uh, I mean, you ask that question. I mean, I've been blown away because we'll have... When our girls come home now, we used to do this all the time when they were in our home, but now when they come home for the holidays, we will have a growth night, guaranteed. I will not let not my kids be home for a week or two and us not have something like this. And I am always the one, I'm the most hungry for it because I believe feedback is the breakfast of champions. I don't want to bury my head in the sand. And sometimes I still do, and Connie helps me to pluck it up. <laughs> Mike, you're not seeing it. You're not all there right now. You know, so I, I, I got a lot of room to grow, but I'm the most hungry because I see the benefit, the value of what comes out of my girls that, yes, sometimes it's hurtful, but it is so helpful if I learn from it. So what effect is it having? And then uh, let's make it even more practical. What is one practical step that you could take Come on, put your life in the mix that you could take that you, to lay down what is distracting you from being all there. What is one thing? What is one thing? For us, when we have our family dinners, no cell phones. That's one practical step. Absolutely no cell phones. If it lights up or buzzes, don't go to it. Uh, if we have a game night, no cell phones. They already know that. It wasn't easy at first, but we towed the line. And now that's just it's a rule that we have. Even they're adults and they still, you know, we still, you know, do that. And, and that's good. Ask yourself, what is one thing that you could do differently? One practical thing. And in order to get back to the relationship, what relationships are all about, you got to have face-to-face -face interaction. It's got to be eyeball to eyeball. I challenge you this week, one day this week, or maybe one evening this week to have a Facebook fast. Call it what you want. Facebook fast. Just set it down. Social media fast for one night or one day. 
And, and you tell me what really happened. You know, at first it's kind of hard, but I guarantee you, being all there will make the biggest difference in that relationship. There might be a lot of things you need to do. Why not start with being all there? Now, if your goal is to wait till you get all the things checked off, cleared out of your inbox, checked off your to-do list before you do any of this stuff, guess what? It's not gonna happen. At times, you gotta be like Mary who just lets it go undone. You're gonna drop everything because of that time that's so important to being all there. You know, God invites us to do that as well. He says, be still. Would you just be still? Be still. Quiet yourself. And know that I am God. Mary saw the importance of that relationship with Jesus as the most important thing. What about you? What about me? To be all there with our relationship with Jesus. You know, scrolling on, on social media, trying to find some little sermon bites that will encourage you and lift you for the day. Maybe a worship song or two. Maybe on your way to work, that 10 or 15 minute drive, you got some good stuff pouring into you. Nothing wrong with that, but that does not replace that one-on-one -on -one time with Jesus where we're sitting with his word and we're letting him speak to us. Is it, that, is it important enough for us to do that? to even be all there with our Heavenly Father, with Jesus, who's a friend of sinners, who comes alongside us. Be all there.